Let's take to 42. And our towns and cities and villages are beginning to twinkle. They're beginning to sparkle just a little bit, aren't they? They are. I've seen the lights going up in some areas near us. Really? Mm -hmm. In the sky? <laughs> <laughs> They're just time travellers. OK. Right, we're talking Christmas lights. Now, we've got 22-year-old Carl Beatston um, in the studio who's been covering his parents' house in Christmas lights for the last six years. Uh, and um, it's good to see you. Good morning. And we also have etiquette consultant Heather Pickering. Hello, Heather. Good morning. Uh, do you find all this a little bit gauche, Heather? I find it quite tacky. I don't know about gauche. Some people do find this sort of thing tacky. However, when you've got a community which supports you and are very for uh, the lights, it's nice to, be able to put something back into the community, especially with the fundraising, but also more the fact that now the council switches off half the street lights, it ma actually makes the street a brighter place again. Mm. Well, the only lights I approve of are candles. Uh, the candle we should, yeah, and I understand the, the tradition of Christmas lights where it, it came from the, you know, the people using candles on trees. But uh, from a, from our point of view, we can't really use candles on the outside. Well, I don't think Christmas should happen anyway. It's a Victorian thing, and it, you know, it's um, it, it's a very modern phenomena. <coughs> Rather like knickers, they were only invented by the Victorians. Were they? Knickers. Yeah. Knickers were only... Before that, we were Nicholas. Oh, absolutely, what yes. Was, why? What, what, what did we do before... How did we cope without knickers? What did we do? Well, we just didn't do anything. We didn't? I mean, Christmas is a, a very modern phenomenon. You don't approve of Christmas, really? No, I don't. No. I don't approve of lights, either. It just on people's houses. Just the, the concept of not sort of having a Christmas just seems rather extreme, especially when it's pretty much something that a lot of people around the world do partake in, whether, uh, you know, whatever religion they are, so they, some people do observe it. Tell us about the lights on your parents' house. Tell us about some of the lights that you've got up there. And So we, we always try and do something different each year um, and try and be original, which is uh, what we've done this year. I have practically built, uh, well, I suppose you could call them robots, uh, that look like a Father Christmas, a uh, polar bear, uh, a reindeer and a penguin all of which actually pretend to play instruments, which the lights flashed <laughs> inside. Is that his worst nightmare? Possibly, yeah. <laughs> the, well, I think it's great, you but know. it's uh, every and child sort of uh, dream. Yeah. Do you still get that lovely, you know, that Christmassy feeling? You just, I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I am a big kid at heart still, yeah. for sure, yeah. I, think we all, I, know the, I know that feeling, and you can tap into it. When it comes around, you only think Christmas is coming again. Then it comes around and you... you it is, you're harking back, you sort of... You're on time travelling, yeah. like back to when you were a child, and you get those same feelings of excitement. They're still there. Yeah, definitely. Vestiges of them. Heather, you don't have that. Uh, no, I don't. I stopped about the age of seven, I'm afraid. <laughs> you are, you, you are the modern manifestation of Scrooge, Heather. Not is, really. Is it going to be a, a the ghost of Christmas past? We've been talking time travelling this morning, haven't we, Rich? Ghost mm. of Christmas future. Oh, that was Victorian as well. It was, but uh, it's going to be dancing round, and then you, uh, at your Christmas morning you're going to be that doing that lovely dance like Sir Alec Guinness in the black and white Scrooge film, and you'll be full of joy, and you'll be you'll be rushing round to Carl's house with a goose. I doubt it very much. I'd probably be cleaning the cooker and vacuuming the bedroom. <laughs> I mean, Christmas is. It's something that wasn't even agreed by the church until 500 years after mm. the supposed birth of Christ. Mm. You know, it, it goes back to Roman times, it goes back to, to pagan times in this country. It's, I mean, I quite like Saturnalia. Mm. Uh, and the only remnant of, of, of pagan times now is, is the Yule log. Mm. All <laughs> the rest is Victorian. It is. It's the, can't, ban it. Yeah, go on, Rachel, you're going to say something. Oh, I was just thinking about the chocolate Yule log I had last night, actually. I was getting <laughs> distracted there. I wanted well, to I know... Sorry, yes, go on. I don't think the pagans had chocolate. No, no, no that's, 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 a, that's a modern advance on the idea, which I think is a good one. This is... A, advances are good. Yeah, Carl, mm. I want to know how you make money from this, because you do, and you say, actually, the children love it, and my children do. They absolutely love seeing these houses loaded, loaded yeah. with loaded lights, and at Christmas time, when we drive around, we get very excited. So how do you make money from it? How does it work? Well, the interesting thing is we never set out to make money from it we for charity yeah we, we just used to put the display on for people just to come and see and people started leaving money on the doorstep once we kind of started synchronizing it to music and doing all the fancy technological stuff so we thought oh, people leaving money maybe we should try a donation box and from that we just have a, a donation box out out the front near a sign which says who we are and what the charity we're supporting 
this year is. And this year it is? It's the uh, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. And that's a charity very close to my because I have type 1 diabetes myself, so I'm quite keen to raise the profile of the charity and, you know, support them in finding a cure. Good well, for you. I say fair play to you. Fair play to you. Keep doing what you're doing, keep smiling, and make the rest of us smile as well. That's what it's all about. Heather, you, you've not exactly developed a fan club on our texts, I've got to say. Well, I didn't expect one. I mean, I don't like fan clubs anyway. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They're a Victorian concept. Thank you. For, listen, Heather, thanks for coming on. We will speak to you again. I think you're a great value. <laughs> it's 8.48. It's and it's Five Live Breakfast. And it's all about giving. Children in Need's a wonderful example, isn't it? Definitely, yeah. Of just, uh, we are a nation of givers in this country, aren't we? Even Heather, I reckon. And that's a great thing, and we should keep, keep doing that. Especially yeah. in well, the fact, that that, the fact that people you d didn't even ask, that, you know, you mm. didn't ask people for money, people just left it there. Yeah. We're going to ask at nine o'clock, why do we keep on giving to charity? Times are tough for millions, high unemployment, living costs soaring, wages frozen... But you keep digging into your pockets for charity tonight's Children in Need is a manifest example of that. It's going to raise millions. Charities across the UK will get loads of your money, your time. Why do we keep on giving? What is it about us? 0500 909 693 85058. We'll talk later. On digital and online. bbc.co.uk slash 5 Live. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Call 0500.